let's try to find the service mesh in this diagram. So here we have two different pods in a Kubernetes class. So what are pods? Maybe a quick background. A pod is basically an abstraction layer in Kubernetes that allows one or more containers to live inside this pod. And these containers are within the same network namespace. Meaning these containers, for example, this here we have two containers, they can actually talk with each other on local host, all right? So usually it's common to see only one container per pod, but you can also have different cases with two, with two containers or even more. Now, the requests that are incoming into our pod here are actually going into the pod and then going through this green proxy. And then after this proxy, the request goes further into our container. Now the question is, what is this green proxy? Well, this proxy is a part of the service mesh, or it is actually the service mesh, but it has some more component. And let's talk about this extra component that we have here, because as we see, the incoming and outgoing requests are always going through the proxy that is living next to our container within the pod. So it's kind of a sidecar proxy to our next to our container. And this proxy also communicates with something called a control plane. Well, it's basically doing the same thing that it's called after. It's basically controlling our service mesh, meaning it's controlling our proxies within the pod. Now, what is the function of these proxies or why do we even have these proxies here? Well, first of all, these proxies can do things like authentication and authorization. Now, I know you probably have a question like, isn't the API gateway already doing that? Because in the previous video, we already talked about API gateways, load balancers and proxies and all of that stuff. And apparently like most of them can actually do that, but I'm gonna give you a clue as soon as we reach the last point here, because this is the, the crucial part. So this can, these proxies can do authentication and authorization. So all the incoming requests can like be authenticated before reaching our container. And the container is basic, basically our application that is deployed inside this container. Okay, it can be a node application or something else. It can also do encryption. So it can in encrypt out incoming and outcoming outgoing traffic. It can do traffic management, the same thing pretty much that an API gateway can do like rate limiting and so on. It can do cir circuit breaking as well. It can do health monitoring. So the control plane kind of knows whether our pod is healthy or not by simply talking to the proxy because it already knows about it, right? It can do observability and traceability. So it can actually do the logging for us to an external platform because our container is not going to take care of that. Our container is solely focused on the business logic and it doesn't have to do like health monitoring or, or traffic management. Our proxy is going to do all of that. It can even do load balancing. Yeah, if you have two containers like this here, this proxy is going to balance the load itself between these containers. And of course you can apply specific policies to this proxy so that it knows how exactly to do the load balancing for you. And one of the main points is actually service discovery. In my previous video, or in my one of the previous videos in the playlist of system design and architecture, so go check it out if you're interested, we talked about service discovery, which is a component that is aware of all the microservices within our VPC or within our platform so that it knows how to reroute the traffic because it's aware of all the microservices that register and deregister if they're, if they're like down or if a new one spins up. And it turns out the service mesh can actually do that right away. It's, it's an included feature that's coming with the service mesh. So it's quite powerful. And as I said, the last point here is that we call a service mesh an east-west traffic. Why is it called an east-west traffic? Because here we're caring about facilitating the communication between microservices. So if we look at this diagram here of our Kubernetes cluster, it can also be a VPC, virtual private cloud. The service mesh is going to facilitate the communication between the pods compared to an API gateway, which usually sits at the, edge of, at the edge of our cluster as an entry point from other clients. And this one is going to be called the north-south traffic. So 
If you ever hear these terms, this is what it's meant by east-west traffic. All right. So also another useful, one of the big use cases for a service mesh is something called zero trust security policy or security architecture, I think it's called. This is when we don't rely on the authentication that's coming from or an OS encryption that's provided by this API gateway or ingress controller in the Kubernetes world. So saying that the request that's coming here is going to be validated. We're going to authenticate this user and all the interactions within our cluster can be unencrypted or there's no TLS, all right? No authorization between, uh, no authorization checks between our pods. Compared to the zero trust policy means no single pod, like in this case we have two, no single pod actually trusts the other pod when it comes to security. So all the incoming requests are going to be authenticated. All right, this is quite cool. It's important for difficult like use cases when you need to be really, really secure within your architecture. Okay. So now we also talked about the differences between the ingress uh, or the API gateways and the service mesh. I also want to talk about the different tools that we can use for it. But first of all, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video that happens to be this blackboard that you're seeing. It's called Eraser and you can access it under eraser.io. It's very cool. You probably know that I've been using this for quite a while now. Like it has a lot of features. It can do create diagrams with AI. It, can, it has flowcharts, cloud architectures. It's specifically tailored for like developers. So go check it out, use it within your team. I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it. Now, one of the tools that it's kind of baked in into the Kubernetes. So it's it's like very easy to, not very easy. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm lying. It's not very easy. It's actually very powerful, but also difficult thing to manage or to install in your Kubernetes, especially if you don't have any experience with Kubernetes. If you have experience with Kubernetes, you probably, this is like the go-to thing, the go-to service mesh that you would install in your cluster. And this does all of these features right away out of the box that we already discussed. And it will use this invite proxy as the proxy within your pods. So it's basically the invite proxy that's living within your pod and doing all these operations. So it's quite powerful and like it's, it's quite famous. Another tool that you can also use is Linkerd. It's kind of a smaller version and less powerful, but also as flexible as Istio. So you can also choose that if you like. I find documentation quite complex for a beginner if you don't have, again, experience with Kubernetes. So you might want to learn ins and outs of Kubernetes first and trying out like with practical examples before jumping into the service mesh, especially these two tools that I suggested. So make sure that you are proficient in Kubernetes, that this is a must. And that's pretty much it. I think I did not miss anything. All right, one thing, if you think about the previous video with the search discovery, you might say that we already looked at the search discovery tools as well, such as uh, the Netflix's Eureka that's baked into the Spring Cloud. Well, you can have a service discovery module or a service discovery ser service discovery ser service discovery as a separate thing. But if you're already using Kubernetes, you can go for a service mesh like Istio right away. And it's also going to already going to include service discovery. That's it. Go check it out. Other playlists on this channel. I'm pretty sure you're going to find them useful as well. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.